If you were to travel back in time to 1984 and survey a bunch of people on the street, you'd find that fewer than 1 in 10 of these people had any form of college education, let alone degrees from prestigious universities such as Harvard or Cambridge. College graduates were like the shiny Pokemon of their generation, so employers, bankers, and mortgage providers would fight each other tooth and nail to cater to a graduate's whims. Fast forward a few decades, however, and things couldn't be any more different. In 2020, depending on where you live, if you throw a jar of honey out the window, odds are it's going to land on a college graduate. Anyway, that's all fine and good, and I can already hear what you guys are thinking. Well, the answer to this question is then pretty obvious, isn't it? More graduates means degrees are worthless, which means going to college is no longer worth it. Ergo, college sucks. After all, why would you put up with like eccentric professors and skyrocketing tuition fees if the return on investment is just no longer there? Right? Wrong. I mean, sure, there's absolutely no denying that degrees are way more common nowadays than they used to be, but this whole falling value of degrees argument always ignores a very important point, which is that the complexity of jobs has also increased over time. While the supply of graduates has gone way up, so has the demand, which is why we see graphs like this showing that graduates still, at least for now, out-earn their paperless peers. So if if that's not the problem, what is? To understand this, however, to understand the root of all evil, I first need to put on my spare hazmat suit. Because you and I, we're gonna travel to a very dangerous place. Will I make it out alive? Wish me luck. So when I think about why college sucks for so many people nowadays, the first thing that always comes to mind is a mismatch of expectations. And to see what I mean here, take this thread posted last year by professional elk on the McMaster's subreddit. Hmm, wait a second. There, much better. In this thread, Mr. Elk talks about how his degree in pharmacology is, to quote him, pretty fucking useless, because one, many of the things he studied are basically inapplicable, inapplicable anywhere else in his professional life, and two, most of the job opportunities he'd have after so much time spent on getting his degree are things such as business roles, government advisory roles, and like, marketing which are like barely related to the things he studied in the first place. He wanted to be a scientist after all, not this. In any case, Mr. Elk ends his post with a sentiment with which I'm sure many of us can relate. And Mr. Elk's struggles are far from unique. You see, oftentimes I chat with students here in Cambridge, biologists, physicists, whatever, and by far one of the biggest complaints they have is that the last thing they want to do with their degree is become bankers. Yet the vast majority of them do, because research positions that would actually employ the scientific skills they've developed in their degree are exceedingly, exceedingly rare for college graduates. And this right Right here, this discrepancy between what you want your degree to be useful for and what it actually ends up being used for is the first major reason why college sucks for so many, is the first major reason why people feel so underwhelmed. It is an institution that, oftentimes with the best of intentions, crushes the hopes and dreams of its students. You come here wanting to become the next Stephen Hawking, but instead you become the next Next, Harold. Who's Harold, you ask? Exactly. Anyone here familiar with the concept of a lemon? Mm. Reading this, I only now realize how weird <laughs> this question must sound. And look, obviously enough, when I say lemon here, I'm not actually talking about this lovely fruit. Instead, I'm talking about the so-called market for lemons, an idea originally coined by Nobel laureate economist George Akerlof, according to which information disparities, as he calls them, between buyers and sellers often 
cause markets to collapse entirely. And to see what I mean here, suppose you want to buy a new car, so you go to like your local dealership. How do you know? How do you figure out if the car that you're looking at is good. How do you know is not just a flaming piece of goose turd, which Akerlof very elegantly terms a lemon. <sighs> He's much more eloquent than me. Well, the point is that you can't really know whether it's a good car until you actually buy it and take it for a ride. But at that point, it's too late. Similarly, it's going to be very hard for employers to know whether someone they're hiring is going to be competent rather than a lemon. And this is where the college degree comes to the rescue. Because, at least in theory, and we're gonna get to this in a second, a college degree is a signal to employers. A signal that you as a person are well organized, that you're able to stay on top of deadlines, that you're able to work well with people, and so on and so forth. And this right here, this signaling theory of degrees as it is known, is why it's more likely for insurance companies, let's say, to hire a biologist, someone with a biology degree, rather than someone who barely graduated high school. They don't care that you're able to like dissect a frog or check beavers for gonorrhea or whatever biologists do. It's just that the degree tells them that you are not a lemon. Yummy. And this is bad. Ultimately, college sucks for 62% of people because they are sold a lie, be it by well-meaning parents, educators, or less well-meaning interest groups which really really want to maintain the status quo, a topic for another time. Students are told that going to college is like the first step towards their dream life, which couldn't be farther from the truth. Statistically speaking, for the vast majority of people, the value of a degree doesn't come from unlocking the dream life, whatever that might be for you. It's just there as a signal to show that you're not a lemon so you can get a boring job further down the line. Which honestly sucks in a way when you think about it. Suddenly, your student experience can very well start feeling like this crappy filler arc in your life because you're spending so much time and effort on learning, you know, various things you're passionate about that ultimately are going to be flushed down the drain by employers further down the line. You're not a lemon, sure, but at what cost? I should make it clear at the end here that this whole expectations mismatch is far from the only reason why people struggle with, you know, with their college experience. Really, the main point of this video was kind of it to be a response to this narrative I hear a lot of the times where people just blindly say, oh, the falling value of degrees, they're no longer worth it, you shouldn't go to college, blah, blah, blah. And this kind of becomes the chorus when it comes to anything bad about college. Oh, it's oversaturated, blah, blah. Um, and sure, there's a lot of validity to that. We've talked about this in previous videos, and we're going to talk again, don't worry. But ultimately, it's not the only reason. And if we want to dissect this problem, if we want to dissect kind of the ills of higher education nowadays, we need to dig a bit deeper. We need to look beyond the obvious facts. And yeah, this was a brilliant first step towards doing so. But anyway, what's your take on all this? Why what do you think is the number one reason uh, a lot of students are not so hot on college today?